गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन वेलकम टू पीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर पंकज टंडन फ्रॉम एटॉमिक एनर्जी रेगुलेटरी बोर्ड मुंबई द सब्जेक्ट इज बायोफिजिक्स एंड द मॉड्यूल ऑन विच वी आर टॉकिंग नाउ इज रेडियो न्यूक्लियर प्रोडक्शन फॉर न्यूक्लियर मेडिसिन द इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग इज द न्यूक्लियर मेडिसिन इज टूडे इज वन ऑफ द इमेजिंग मॉडलिटी एंड वी शुड से वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट मॉडिंग मॉडलिटी एज कंपेयर टू द अदर इमेजिंग मॉडलिटीज प्रेजेंट in our country like x rays ct mri and in case of nuclear medicine we may have to use radio nucleotides which is to be labeled with different compounds we should know what are the different ways on which this radio nucleotides are produced if you see in this presentation there are three important ways it which is produced it is reactor produced accelerator produced and generator produced and every production mechanism is having certain advantage over other production techniques when a clinical test requires that a radioisotope to be administered internally it is advantageous to use an isotope with a short half life to minimize the radiation dose received by the patients why why we are looking for an isotope which is a short half life because we don't want the radio nuclei to remain present in the body even after the scan is over we may have many radio nucleotides which are very good which can be used for scanning purposes but the reason why we cannot able to use is because of half life so we have to look for an isotope which is having a half life so that by the time the scan is over it should be out from the patient body in a few minutes a few hours time then to remain in the body for long time because the time in which it is remained to the body it is definitely going to give the dose so we don't want the isotope to remain in the body when the scan is over so definitely we look for an isotope which is having a short half life what is half life half life is the term which we use by the time it decays to half of its original value when we are using 5 millicuri half life is 2 minutes after 2 to 2 minutes it becomes 2.5 millicuri now if you use larger dose of shortly radio nucleotides then what exactly happen it is going to give a good quality image no doubt about it but it is going to give large amount of dose so we have to use the isotope which can give a minimum radiation or the quantity but get a good quality image the other important thing is that isotope which we are using which is to be labeled with different compound should not be so short lived that it cannot be sent to a hospital which is at larger distance and that is the limitation of a pet isotopes if you compare with the spec isotopes if you know the spec conventional nuclear medicine techniques where technetium 99m is used how it comes it comes with a mechanism called generator based isotopes it means it has been produced from molybdenum and finally decays to a technetium but its half life is 6 hours in 6 hours it can go from one place to other place but when you talk about positron emission isotopes apart from fluorine 18 other half lives are in minutes of carbon nitrogen oxygen it means what it means do isotope is very good it can able to give an examination it can be used for an examination which is very can able to give the result which is not possible in other type of exam other type of uh, choice of isotope but we cannot able to transport that's why right. when the cyclotron is there at one place fluorine 18 can go from one city to other city from one country to other country but again because of short half life it has certain limitations but we cannot use carbon or nitrogen or oxygen the reason is very simple because of short half life now when we see this particular uh picture what does it says we have some imaging time that is shown by block it has been act, you have administered the activity your imaging is over but if the isotope which is used is having long half life what is happening it is emits in the body what it does it is of no use to the body because scanning is over you have got the information 
But finally, what is happening? It is unnecessary giving a dose to the body. So we would like to use short-lived isotopes to minimize patient radiation dose. Unlike an X-ray device, we can't turn it off. It's very simple. When you go for X-ray examination, what it happens? The machine gets on, X-rays are emitted, it comes, it comes out from the body and scans. The patient has not become radioactive. But in case of nuclear medicine, what happens? You have injected the activity inside the body. It means it will not come out. It will have some biological decay as well as physical decay. Now, physical decay as we all know, it is the characteristic of the isotope. It always remains constant. It never changes whether the isotope is outside the body or inside the body. But biological decay plays a very important role. Now, if the excretion rate is very fast, it means the biological half-life is reduced. If the uptake is slow, or uptake is fast, it totally depends on excretion rate. Uptake is taken care of with organ when you are administering the activity, but excretion is one of the important thing which has to be looked into it. So, if we are able to choose an isotope having short half-life, where the scan is done, you get information and the dose is minimized. Naturally occurring, occurring isotopes which are very good, we can start using it having a half-life years. 10 is to 5 years. What does it mean? How does it help to you? Nothing. Your scan is done. Information is there, but it is in the body. It is going to basically giving the dose to the body. So, always we look for an isotope which is short lived isotopes. Now, how these isotopes are produced? What is the mechanism? That only we are going to discuss in this presentation. Now, first important thing is when we talk about reactor, what happens in reactor? What happens? In reactor, basically, you are basically uh, uh, hitting that particular material with a subnuclear particles and then it changes. Now, if a nucleus which is having a neutron and proton and when it is hit by uh, some active particles, then it may lead it may it may lead to some kind of other product. There are two main methods of performing this bombardment. Either inserting the target in the nuclear reactor, find for long lived isotope as soon as some time is needed for processing and shipment. There are two mechanisms. In reactor based, either you keep the target in that particular place by inserting and then during the reaction it gets activated or some other way is the fission takes place. During fission what is happening? During fission some kind of uh, product is being formed which is having high mass number. Using a charged particle accelerator called a cyclotron, this is again the second exam, second way of production. First is a nuclear reactor, reactor based, second is accelerator based. We can also have a longer lived isotopes from a nuclear reactor that decay to a short lived isotope in a portable generator. What does it mean? It means there is a mechanism that either you can able to produce through a nuclear bombardment or using a charged particle accelerator or a generator method. The other thing is there are mechanism of production, but these three are the important ways by which isotopes are produced reactor, generator and accelerator that we are going to discuss in this three in this particular presentation. Now, if you see the common radionuclides for imaging, either they are cyclotron produced or they are generator produced or they are reactor produced and sometimes fission uh, when the fission takes place as a fission products like gallium 67. How the gallium 67 is produced? It is produced in the cyclotron. Technetium, how the technetium comes? It comes from molybdenum from a generator. Like cyclotron is also produced indium 111 and cyclotron can also produce iodine 123 which is one of the best isotope but it requires cyclotron production. So, different photons of different energies have been produced and their decay mechanism is either electron capture or isomeric, isomeric transition or beta decay and the different half-lives 
Or these are the different common radionuclides which are being used as far as nuclear medicine is concerned. But if you see, the mechanism of production is different. Now, when we talk about reactor produced isotopes, what we see here, if uranium-235, when hit with a neutron, it gives uranium-236. Uranium-235 is a fissile material. Uranium-236, what exactly happened? It decays and some fission products are being formed. Similarly, there are different kind of reaction like N gamma or NP reaction in which different products have been formed. Now, if the number of protons changes, then we get different kind of elements. It is what nothing but a proton to neutron ratio because neutrons are added, materials get activated and it is above line of stability thus decays by electron emission. So, basically it is nothing but a neutron by proton ratio. What we are doing this is nothing but either hitting by neutron, changing the neutron ratio and by proton ratio or hitting the proton and changing the proton. So, whenever there is change in the neutron by proton ratio, the isotope becomes radioactive and finally decays by mechanism by different kind of radiations is being committed out, is being uh, emitted. Now, there is reactor produced isotopes as we were talking about either it is uh, NP reaction or N alpha reaction or N gamma reaction a different kind of reaction has been given in this day like how carbon 14 radionuclide it is produced from nitrogen 14 by NP reaction. Now, if you want to produce sodium 24 you have to take sodium 23 N gamma reaction you can able to produce this. Suppose you want to break iodine 131, iodine 131 requires tellurium powder by N gamma reaction you can get iodine 131. So, these are the different isotopes which are of choice which are been produced by reactor and most of the isotopes can be used in nuclear medicine, but they have different cross section by which the bombardment takes place and in this way how the abundance is there and how the half life is there that varies. Now, we talk about accelerator, we know a linear accelerator what it does, accelerator the term itself means it is going to accelerate the charge particle. But if we can able to make the accelerator in a circular form as you can able to see, then you can able to accelerate the charge particle by bringing the small charge particle in the center and there are two different D's are there who have been connected with different potentials and in the magnet. So, once the, once the acceleration starts, the charge particle gets accelerated to such a high energy that it been deflected by a deflector target and deflector and finally hits the target to make a different isotopes. So, this is the way how the cyclotron works. Cyclotron follows the principle of accelerator only, but it is in spherical form than in the linear form what is called linear accelerator. Since we are using proton bombardment, we change the element and typically lie below line of stability thus decays typically be a positron emission. When we talk about any production mechanism, whether it is accelerator based, generator based, reactor based, what exactly we are trying to do? We are trying to change the neutron by proton ratio. Once we change the neutron by proton ratio, what is happening? We are making an element of making isotopes who is going to decay because it has become unstable and tries to become the ground state. Cyclotrons can be located locally, thus allowing for short lived isotopes reducing patient dose. As we know, in case of cyclotron, the major disadvantage is though it is a positron emitter, though whatever the isotopes are produced, they are the major constituents human body. But the main problem or limitation is it is short at having short half life. Short half life limits their movement from one place to other place. Fluorine 18 is fine, 110 minutes, but what about other isotopes? Having few minutes, for that you require a cyclotron at your place. So, that you can able to produce and you can able to use for medical examinations. Cyclotrons are very expensive to buy and operate often there are distribution networks. Now, we can say a cyclotron in any city can able to cater the whole city. They can run for 2 hours in the morning and can able to produce high curie, large curie of activity which can go from one place to other place. Even you can able to send fluorine from one city to other city or from one country to other country which are well connected. 
So, but it is a very expensive affair to have a cyclotron. As cyclotrons are able to produce different positron emitters, the most important is carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine. Though we can able to produce gallium, we can able to produce indium, 123 and thallium. Thallium initially if we look, it is one of the better isotope as far as heart imaging is concerned. As a thallus chloride you can use it. But what, what happened now? We have to import this because we cannot able to produce it. Because it requires cyclotron of very high energy to produce it. Similarly gallium, similarly indium and vitamin 123. Cyclotron can able to produce any such isotope which is listed over here by bombarding with a high energy particle. But the limitation you have to change the target and it requires cyclotron. Now comes to generator. In the previous slide we discussed about uh, reactors, we have discussed about uh, accelerators, now we talk about generators. In generators is what exactly? Uh, if you see generator means what? Generator is a kind of uh, a small uh, uh, basically a module which can able to keep the uh, parent for a longer time and finally the parent decays and you get a product or a daughter we can say. Now alternative reactors or cyclotron to use mother isotope that has a long half life that decays to a short half life daughter that can be used for imaging purposes. I can give a few examples of how the generator works. If you know molybdenum technetium generator, where technetium is the workhorse for general nuclear medicine. In our country, if you see, most of the nuclear medicine examination which are using spec, they are using generators. Either generators are to be imported or we can get from indigenous manufacturers who are making the generator. These generators is having alumina column where the moly is being adsorbed and moly is molybdenum or moly we can say it is having a half life of 66.6 .6 hours. So it decays and finally it gives technetium. This technetium is having a half life of 6 hours and what we require is technetium. The thing is technetium is not being absorbed in the alumina column. So we have to elevate this technetium outside. It is a milking process you can say. Every 24 hours if you see the moly is able to give a good quantity of technetium and we can able to dilute technetium every morning and then finally combined with a pharmaceutical to make a ready pharmaceutical. In this way how this generator works. But the generator is not at all limited to, limited to <coughs> molybdenum technetium, germanium gallium, strontium yttrium, strontium uh, yttrium, yeah, and tin indium. There are many generators available. But when we talk, this is the most commonly used generators in our time. Now, if you see generator radionuclides, gallium, rubidium, strontium, technetium, indium, and the different mechanism by which uh, it decays. If you see strontium, technetium and indium, it is written isomeric transition is the way it decays. But gallium and rubidium, it is decay method is beta or electron capture. Now, when we look the half life of rubidium, which is one of the best isotopes to be used and a positron emitter we have to look for a generator which is half life is 1.3 minutes. Now 1.3 minutes you cannot able to send from one place to other place. Definitely require a parent which is strontium. We strontium rubidium generator is being used in the hospital. Nowadays if you see uh, most of the places molybdenum technetium and germanium gallium is the two different generator which are very commonly used in nuclear department. And now slowly slowly uh, people have started uh, procuring strontium rubidium generator also. Because each isotope is having a different uh, way of uh, analyzing the disease. So we cannot replace uh, th all this isotope by single isotopes. So sometimes we require information which we not get in one isotope. So we look for the other isotopes. 
Now, when we see this uh, table, what does it infer? This is uh, basically one of the important and most important, you can say, uh, uh, graph uh, for generated uh, activity levels in case of uh, MOLLE technician. Now, if you see the MOLLE is, uh, is being building up, MOLLE, MOLLE, is, uh, MOLLE is decaying and technician build up is taking place. It starts from 0 and finally, at certain level, it reaches to the maximum. After one day means 24 hours, it reaches to the maximum. And then you can able to separate this uh, technetium from molybdenum. Then technetium started decaying and uh, slowly, slowly technetium builds up takes place. So, if you see the moly is decaying up, technetium gets built up, you take it out, again build up, again take it out. Every 24 hours, if you see, you can able to reach to the maximum. But since the decay of moly is also taking place, you cannot get the same activity what you got in first 24 hours. It means the technetium is able, you will be able to get the technetium every day in the morning for the whole day purpose from the molly which you have procured one time and the generator is molly technetium generator. And after 5 or 6 days, this molly is of no use to you. So, after 6 to 7 day technetium what you are Eluting, you can able to get some few uh, millicuri from that particular molly, but may not be able to suffice for the whole day program. Definitely every week you require a generator or every 15 days or 10 days you require a generator uh, which gives molly and finally uh, you get technician out of it and you can able to use it. Generators are developed to serve as a convenient source of the production for short lived radionuclides. And we are discussing about three different uh, mechanisms like generator, reactor, accelerators. And generators are more commonly used nowadays. Initially, in the earlier days, uh, when we were discussed, when we were used to radioisotope, iodine 131 was the most important use of P32. This has come from reactor uh, based, uh, reactor based isotopes. So either these isotopes are from fission and or N gamma reaction, but uh, nowadays generators are very common because you can able to take the generators from one place to other. It can be uh, kept in a hospital, you can able to use daily and after 6 or 7 days, uh, be, depends on the half life of the parent, you can able to discard the generator as a radioactive waste. A generator is basically constructed on the principle of uh, decay growth relationship between a long lived parent uh, radionuclide and a short lived daughter radionuclide. In a generator, basically, a long lived parent nuclide is allowed to decay to its short lived daughter nuclide, and the latter is then chemically separated. That is what the generator means. Now, you have taken moly technetium generator. Moly is uh, the parent isotope, 67 hours, it is baking, decaying, and finally, you are getting technetium. And technetium is what basically you have to take it out from the generator by using saline, it is called elution or uh, that particular particulate which comes out, it is to be labeled with different compounds to make a ready pharmaceutical. So, we are calling this particular mechanism as a cow milking, like what the cow gives the milk every 24 hours, similarly you can get the technetium after 24 hours and you can use it for a daily routine purposes. The importance of radionuclide generator lies in the fact that uh, they are easily transportable and serve as a source of short lived radionuclides in the institutions far from site of any cyclotron or reactor facility. Now, if at all you want to use a uh, radionuclide at a place where you cannot able to um, put the cyclotron or reactor, generator plays a very important role. And as we know that because uh, technetium is a work for workhorse of uh, conventional nuclear medicine, it, it, it is a wonder for nuclear medicine examination. You do not require a cyclotron reactor for that. You can very well able to use uh, generators for such kind of uh, processes. And generators are either ion exchange resins or alumina column which uh, contain a parent radionuclide. With time, the parent radionuclide decays to a daughter radionuclide. This is not adsorbed in the alum. So, how, how you can able to how you can able to elevate this particular technetium is very simple. Molly is decaying, technetium building up, and finally technetium is 
uh, separable from the column by using uh, saline and uh, you can able to get pertechnetate. This pertechnetate is what is the important radionuclide uh, where we can able to uh, tag it with different compounds to make a radiopharmaceutical. So, this generator is basically a glass or plastic column fitted at the bottom with a fitted disc and the column is filled with uh, adsorbent materials such as uh, cation and anion exchange resin, aluminum and zirconia. So, either aluminum can be used or a zirconia can be used as a column and where this particular isotope is to be absorbed. Once it decays, finally uh, your daughter is ready and your job is only to take it out the daughter and then finally label with compound to make a pharmaceutical. Because there are differences in chemical properties, the daughter activity is eluted in a carrier free state with an appropriate solvent leaving the parent in the column. Now, if uh, you are taking a generator where Molly is there because I am referring Molly uh, is one of the Molly technician generator is one of the most commonly used generator in nuclear medicine. So, Molly decays, next day you can get uh, technetium in the form of pertechnetate, then again Molly decays and the Molly is keep on decaying, technetium is building up, you are taking out a technetium and again next day you can able to get. But since the decay mechanism goes off Molly uh, because of its half life of 67 hours, after certain time, after 6 or 7 days or maybe 10 days, this generator is of no use and you have to discard the generator as a radioactive waste. After elution, the daughter activity starts to grow again in the column. That is, uh, I am keep on repeating and I have shown this particular uh, graph to you that really it is a marvelous uh, picture uh, which gives that how the production is taking place and how the decay is taking place. A radioactive generator must be sterile and pyrogen free. Why it is sterile? Why pyrogen free? Because finally you are taking out uh, the technetium. If it is not sterile or pyrogen free, uh, the technetium which is coming out, which you are going to label with some compound, uh, then this particular uh, is going to be administered in human body. When you are going to administer it in human body, uh, you have to be very, very careful because it should not give a reaction to the human body. Though once we make the radio pharmaceutical ready, that also is going to have some quality control procedure, but we have to see to it the production techniques. Uh, if for human use you are using some kind of uh, radionuclide, then generator itself should be sterile. How to sterilize this particular by autoclaving the entire column or by preparing it from sterile material under the aseptic conditions? Often bacteriostatic agents are added to the generator column so that um, you get a product which is bacteria free. Elution or milking of generator must be carried out under aseptic conditions. Why we, we are so much careful uh, when we are taking out a technetium because uh, we do not want that uh, when the scanning is being done, the patient gets reactive because of this particular compound and may lead to some kind of serious consequences. So, quality control uh, of the product and uh, the quality control generator uh, plays a very, very important role as far as generator method is concerned. If you see the ideal radio generator should be very simple, conventional, rapid to use and give a high yield of daughter nuclide repeatedly and reproducibility. That is what the Molly technetium does. They are very simple to use, anybody can use it. A generator you can keep it on a table and this is being uh, shielded properly so that no radiation is coming out and uh, moly is decaying. You just keep the one vial of saline so that uh, whatever technetium which is being generated gets combined and from other vial uh, which is vaporized uh, while you can able to collect the pertechnetate from down. It should be properly shielded uh, definitely because it contains radioactive material, moly is uh, having half life 67 years and uh, it is giving gamma emission. So, we need to uh, understand that it should not give unnecessary kind of radiation to the person who is basically making this uh, radionuclide. The generator uh, eluate must be free from parent nuclide and absorbed material. Uh, very, very commonly it has been seen that. Uh, uh, we always see the molybdenum breakthrough, breakthrough test. There are certain kind of tests because uh, no doubt when you are eluting technetium from moly, 
some part of uh, moly remains in technetium and that should not cause unnecessary reaction in the human body. So, there are certain limits uh, which has to be looked into it and definitely when you are doing such kind of illusions, uh, some chemicals are also being used uh, to take it out uh, technetium from the moly. So, we have to see to it the radionuclide impurity, radiochemical impurities that should be in the minimum level or the level which is acceptable as the protocol is concerned and uh, so that when you are using it, it can be used only for scanning purpose and it should not give unnecessary hazards to the human body. The important generator uh, which is being nowadays is moly technetium, yttrium strontium is also one of the most important generators, strontium people were using it. But nowadays, uh, germanium gallium generator is playing a very important role and uh, similarly other generators are coming up. Uh, but we have to see to it that though uh, technetium is coming out and having a half life of 6 hours when it is being injected, it comes in a technetium stable state but it does not give any harm to the body though it is having long half life. So, thus, uh, apart from these generators, uh, other generator if you see uh, gallium, uh, germanium gallium generators, uh, gallium is uh, very good isotopes uh, to be used uh, for different kind of cancers and uh, technetium is the workhorse as I am keep on repeating in the different uh, slides. If, uh, if we want to conclude this particular uh, slide, uh, we can say that a um, presentation and understanding of the principle of uh, radionuclide production extend translation knowledge to the application of diagnostic and therapeutic nuclear medicine procedure. Definitely the production is one of the most important thing which we should know it okay, how these radioisotopes are produced and production processes are not generally complex and are important to broader application research. Most of the radioisotopes found in nature have relatively long half life which we know directly we cannot use it. So, we are looking for artificial radioisotopes uh, which are produced in reactor, accelerators or generator and they also belong to elements which are not handled well by the human body. Let us suppose if I use a long half life isotopes uh, which um, not bothered about the long half life, but it is not being handled by the body, it gives some kind of reactions. So, we have to look for an isotope or a, a product which is uh, well taken by the body and definitely the half lives is very important and uh, it should be sterile it should be able to tag to make different radiopharmaceutical. As a result, uh, medical application generally require the use of radioisotope which are produced artificially. So, we are not nowadays using any um, isotope which is naturally produced because of many reasons I have been stated earlier because of half life, because it is not been properly handled by the human body. So, we always look for an isotope uh, which are having short half lives or um, can body constituents, so positron emitters are playing a very, very important role which are produced by cyclotron. With this, thank you very much.